Greetings, ladies and gentle readers. I'm Dwyer, and I've just finished reading Unintended Cultivator, Volume 1. Um, as you can see from the title, it is a cultivation novel. And I don't think I've read, run into this author before, have I? I don't think I have. Looking, we've got some bunch of things I don't recognize. No, I don't think I've read his writing before. Um, but yeah, this one that came out of nowhere, I guess, 1,600 five-star reviews on Amazon. That is actually pretty good. That is pretty good. And overall, I think this was fairly nice. Now, it does have a few obvious things in it. Uh, cultivation novel, you had some, like, you had some earlier bullying. A lot of obvious tropes, right? But it's kind of okay because they weren't done badly. I didn't feel like the main character was getting strong too quickly in this one. That's one a, a lot of people mess out on because they've got this really, really good idea of this main character and how awesome he is. So they go from nothing to look how awesome he is immediately. And then it's just like, that's not, I, I don't care. There was no journey. There was only a destination. So it's unfortunate, but this doesn't suffer from that. This seems like we're going on a journey of someone both learning about the world at large, slowly getting stronger. That emphasis there is super important. The whole slowly thing. He's not immediately a god or anything. Cool. There are a few things in here that I, I was taken by surprise about that I kind of enjoyed. Like, uh, like most cultivation novels, there's like mystical beasts. Um, it took me by surprise when they apparently had their own personality. That was pretty cool. Some of them, mm, I'll leave that there. I'll leave that there. There, there are a couple of uh, hidden surprises there, which I thought was very interesting. He, the main character, as a lot of cultivation tropes do, he gets the attention of stronger cultivator. And he's like, I'm going to help you for reasons. And immediately, like, okay, okay, okay. Please don't become tropey and cringy. For the love of everything, please don't do that. And I think for the most part, it avoided it. It did do a couple of tropes, but it did it to poke fun at those. Because uh, in the middle of it, we have like this really stupid person showing up like, Yes, I am the, uh, I don't know, descendant or master of the Burning Crush sector, whatever it was he was. And he's like, and now you've gotten in my way for the last splat. Yeah, he's just killed. Just immediately. It's just like, pop, not by the main character, but because this loudmouth ran into someone he shouldn't have while he's monologuing at the main character, and he just went splat. Like, eh, hey, you okay? Like, yeah. Like, he was bugging you, wasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Stupid. Uh, let's go back to what we were doing. And I thought that was funny, because I was, like, immediately slapping so many bad cultivation novels with, like, these over-the-top cardboard cutout villains who are just like, Ooh, I'm going to kill you because I, Master, falls down the stairs. I've mastered the two-step toe break, and you will hoo 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 And, yeah, it's just like, no, that is so... Dumb. Unless it's done very, very well, which is hard to do. Most of the time it isn't. So it was funny to see that in here and his laugh. It's like, ah, ha, ha, you done got, you done got schooled, kid. I wasn't sure if I was going to like it because as you can see from the description here, it has like all of the warning signs of it's going to be like, yeah, I'm not going to like it because you've got, um, like he's chosen over the nobles who look down on him. Okay. That he's in a family of ancient cultivators learning their secrets. It's like, okay. But it was a rather unique story, and I, I enjoyed it. I actually enjoyed it. I am now, you can't see it, but I am now following uh, the author. And when this one comes out, March 12th, I'll probably do this one. Because I imagine now he's going to go into the world at large, and then we'll see if... 
the author is able to keep the interest with a larger world, will it still feel as interesting, as unique as like the mountain that they're on from uh, the first one? Does he have more surprise up his sleeve? Does it get tropey? We're going to hope it doesn't lean into that. Does he rank, does he suddenly start, you know, randomly ramping up uh, the power of the main character? We're going to hope it doesn't do that. So yeah, we'll just have to, we'll just have to see. We'll just have to see. Now, I don't think just yet that it's on the same level as Cradle. You'll have to wait for the next book to see if it can really start, you know, get closing that particular gap. Because Cradle set a very, very, very high bar for any cultivation novel to clear, right? So we'll have to really see how he interacts with other characters in the world at large, the decisions he's making there uh, and whatnot. I think he's set up for a good story and it didn't take him forever to do sub 500 page so i think he's got a very good beginning here i think he's got a very good beginning here uh there was some parts of the book that didn't really hit i think like they should have but overall uh, overall it looked like it was thought out and decently written so yeah i'll be looking for the next one i'll be thinking for the, i'll be looking for the next one unintended cultivator volume one if you're looking for a cultivation novel you could definitely choose worse go ahead and pick it up it has got my seal of approval for now